Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, Section 3.2, Polynomial Functions, Y-Intercepts. I said before that intercepts are not going away, and they're going to show up every time we look at a new type of function. That's the bad news. But the good news is the approach for finding them remains the same. So do you remember how to find y-intercepts? Think about it. The y-intercept on a graph is on the y-axis, which means you did not move left or right to get to it. And if you did not move left or right, that means your x equals 0. And then a function, x is what goes into it. So you put all that together, you simply have to evaluate f of 0, which is usually pretty easy. Sometimes it's quicker than others. For example, f of x equals x to the third power minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. What do we get when we substitute 0 into that function? Should be pretty transparent, but let's go ahead and work it out. If we substitute 0 into the function, we'll get 0 to the third power minus 2 times 0 squared plus 9 times 0 plus 18. Multiplicatively, 0 annihilates anything it touches. Since this is 0 times itself 3 times that 0, since this is a multiplication problem involving 0, that 0, same thing here. In fact, the only thing the 0 didn't touch multiplicatively is the plus 18. So everything's gone except the 18. Well, like I said, that was probably fairly transparent from the beginning that substituting 0 into the function would give us 18. So you could say the y-intercept is equal to 18. Or you could say that the y-intercept is the point 0, 18. Which answer is correct? Well, it depends upon who's asking you the question. So if you're doing an online homework platform, read very carefully if it wants an integer or an ordered pair. And if you're doing pencil and paper homework, ask your professor, do you want the integer or the ordered pair? Of course, if you're doing pencil and paper homework, you can play it safe and write both. They're both correct. What about b? g of x equals x plus 2 all raised to the third power times x minus 1 raised to the second power times x minus 3. Can you do this one mentally? It's possible because the numbers don't get out of control. I, I know what it is, but do you? Yeah, you can't just look at it and go 18 like I did on this one. The difference between these two is that the second function is factored, but the first one isn't. So when we substitute 0 into the first function, the first thing that happens to it is a lot of multiplying. So everything it touches disappears. But in a factored function, when we substitute 0, multiplication is not the first thing that happens to it. Addition and subtraction is. And when you add or subtract a 0, you just get a new number. So if your function is factored and you're looking for the y-intercept, it's not just a matter of simply saying it's the number at the end, the constant term, if you will. You actually have to do a little bit of math, but it's not that bad. If I substitute 0 for all the x's, it looks like this. Now if I just work it out, 0 plus 2 is 2, that's getting raised to the third power. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, that's getting raised to the second power. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And by the way, we're just doing the order of operations. Speaking of which, after parentheses is exponents, so 2 to the third power is 8. Negative 1 squared is 1. And the negative 3 is just sitting there patiently waiting for the exponents to finish. And then next and last is multiplication. 8 times 1 is 8, times negative 3 is negative 24. So the wider set is negative 24, or as an ordered pair, 0, comma, negative 24. Again, which one is correct? They both are. Which one is preferred? That depends upon who's asking you the question. If it's in an online homework platform, just read the directions carefully. And if it's pencil and paper, ask the professor, which do you prefer?